Hello there everyone, it's Mr. Lane here to introduce you to the art period known as Late Antiquity or Early Christian Art, which was between the dates of 200 CE to 550 CE. The term antiquity is relating to the ancient world. Late Antiquity is the transitional period between antiquity and the Middle Ages, the 4th through the 6th century. Also keep in mind the first depiction of Christian stories that you will be looking at are not necessarily from the time that Jesus Christ lived. Remember to take good notes and let's begin. Late Antiquity Key Ideas The style of early Christian works is described as Late Roman or of Late Antiquity. Early Christianity is not the style of the works itself just the subject matter. This period of art emerged as the Roman Empire fell into decline. Artists from this time come from a wide variety of backgrounds and previous religious beliefs. As a result, we'll see a variety of styles. The earliest works can be found in catacombs or on sarcophagi. The movement was founded by Jesus Christ in the early first century. The Edict of Milan established Christianity as a legal religion. The agreement shifted Christianity from being an illicit, persecuted sect to being a welcome and soon dominant religion of the Roman Empire, thanks to the help of Emperor Constantine. Early leaders or popes were martyred, such as St. Peter. A martyr is a person who is killed for their religions or other beliefs. Here are the list of key terms that you will learn about throughout the lecture. These are the artworks we will study. The city of Ravenna, as you can see on the map here in Italy right above Rome, was the seat of the Roman Empire in the 5th century and then of Byzantine Italy until the 8th century. It has a unique collection of early Christian mosaics and monuments. Because Christians were severely persecuted, the cross was used as a sign of protection and a way for Christians to identify other Christians. But monotheism was not accepted in the Roman Empire, and so the cross symbol was hidden or disguised to maintain secrecy. Here are some examples. The decline of the Hellenic tradition in the art of late antiquity. The Hellenic religion is a traditional religion and way of life revolving around the Greek gods, primarily focused on the 12 Olympians and embracing ancient Hellenic values and virtues. Battle of the Romans and Barbarians, Ludovsi Battle Sarcophagus, 250 to 260 CE. A sarcophagus is Greek for consumer of flesh. It's a coffin, usually of stone, as you can see here. Themes that you will see arise in the art of late antiquity include a blending of historical and mythological subjects. We will see a blend of traditional Roman symbols and biblical scenes representing salvation. The Romans on the battle sarcophagus are portrayed as more noble and heroic. Their features are ideal. The Goths, on the contrary, have wild expressions. They are the barbarians, something the Romans borrowed from the Greeks. The Goths were a nomadic Germanic people who fought against Roman rule in the late 300s 
in early 400s AD, helping to bring about the downfall of the Roman Empire, which had controlled much of Europe for centuries. The Romans look stern and serious. This figure is charging into battle. The tomb or sarcophagus was large and it had four layers of forms. So it was also very dense. Romans fight barbarians on this chaotic coffin which show signs of a turn in artistic trends. Catacombs of Priscilla, Rome, late second century through the fourth century CE. A catacomb is an underground cemetery consisting of a subterranean gallery with recesses for tombs as constructed by the ancient Romans. It was illegal to bury dead within the walls of Rome, and so these underground burial chambers were located outside the walls. Here are two of many catacombs in Rome. Tufa is a soft, porous, sedimentary rock. Think of it as volcanic-like. Catacombs are stacked on top of each other in sometimes three levels. Some 40,000 tombs have been located here. Cubiculum will be the larger rooms that were within the catacombs. Loculi are the horizontal shelves where the bodies were buried. There are no bodies or treasures because of grave robbers. The Santa Priscilla Catacombs was originally owned not by the church, but privately. The family, which may or may not have been Christian, owned the land for more than 250 years. They began burying the dead of their extended family here, freedmen and slaves included, in a system of tunnels which they added to as necessary. Even if they were Christians, they probably weren't just burying Christians. Families in the early centuries of the common era were often of mixed religions, and the tombs here were organized by family groupings, not by religions. Jesus Christ was an important figure in the history of art, and we'll see him depicted throughout various eras. Some of the categories include life of Jesus in art, incarnation, and childhood, where you see the conception, birth, and infancy. And here's the list of some of the common stories. And then there's also the public ministry, where you see the teaching of Jesus and miracles he performed. And there's a list of some of the common stories you'll see depicted there. The passion is also a common subject for artists. The events or episode leading to Jesus' trial, execution, resurrection, and ascent into heaven, Easter. No one whatsoever should be denied the opportunity to give his heart to the observance of the Christian religion, of that religion which he should think best for himself, Emperor Constantine. Edith of Milan, 313 CE. Here we find several early scenes of Christian iconography. Artists were interested in glorifying the spiritual rather than the human aspect. The woman you see here with the baby is perhaps the earliest representation of the Madonna or Virgin Mary and Child, and a subject that was very popular in Western art history. Typology Isaac's sacrifice, pre
prefigures Christ's sacrifice. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son foretold God's willingness to sacrifice his son Christ for the salvation of mankind. Typology in Christian theology is the recognition of concordances between events, especially between episodes in the Old and New Testaments. Prefiguration in early Christian art, the depiction of Old Testament persons and events as prophetic forerunners of Christ and New Testament events. Catacombs of Priscilla, Orant Fresco. Orant, an early Christian art, is a figure with both arms raised in the ancient gesture of prayer, as you see the woman in the middle possibly doing. The discoveries here have sparked controversy over the role of women in the church and helped scholars reevaluate the importance of the Virgin Mary in early Christian history. Some have argued that the fresco shows women leading a mass, in other words, acting as priest, which would fly in the face of Catholic teachings, but instead it might depict a funeral banquet, the kind of celebration that both pagan and early Christian Romans would hold at the tomb of the deceased. Whether women led mass or not may be beside the point. The frescoes in Santa Priscilla show that women played a larger role in the early church than is generally assumed. Next, we'll look at the Good Shepherd fresco. The painter of the fresco on the left was familiar with Roman paintings. Christians faced problems because they rejected other Roman gods and were also a threat to Rome on a political level. As a result, they depict images of Christ in which their style is borrowed from Greco-Romans. Christ will care for his followers as a shepherd will care for his flock. The good shepherd is symbolic for reference to the crucifixion in which Christ was the sacrificed lamb for humanity. It is not common to see scenes of the crucifixion because it would have been potentially seen by the Romans as threatening. Now we move on to architecture, starting with St. Peter's Basilica. Here's a short video you can watch. Old St. Peter's was built by Constantine, the first imperial patron of Christianity. This huge church stood over St. Peter's grave. The building's plan and elevation resembled those of Roman basilicas, not temples. It's Europe's largest Christian church and main church in Rome for the Pope. St. Peter was viewed as the first Pope according to the New Testament when he was given the keys to earth by Christ. This church is believed to hold the body of St. Peter. It's also built in the shape of a cross. Old St. Peter's was torn down during the Renaissance because it was falling apart. There was an old plan that has been built on top of it. Basilicas were large general purpose buildings. Christians used them as houses of worship. This plan originated in ancient pagan Rome that was an administrative building. The two basic types of church plans are the basilica and the central plan. The basilica, with its long axis that focuses attention on the altar, has been the most popular type of church plan because of its practicality. The transept, the transept housed St. Peter's relics, which attracted hordes of pilgrims. 
Relics are body parts, clothing, or objects associated with a saint or Christ himself. The transept also took on the symbolism of the Christian cross. The apse in architecture is a semicircular or polygonal termination to the choir, chancel, or aisle of a secular or ecclesiastical building. First used in pre-Christian Roman architecture, the apse often functioned as an enlarged niche to hold the statue of a deity in a temple. Interior of Santa Sabina, looking northwest, Rome, Italy, 422 to 432. This church was built a century after Old St. Peter's. Another interpretation of the apse is the idea of a giant gateway pointing towards paradise. Images of salvation would be located in the upper portion. The priest stood in the front of the altar with the Holy Bible which Christians believed was the way to salvation. Located on top of a hill and similar to some of the pagan temples located on a hill, this location was important to be a symbol of the new official religion of Rome. Santa Constanza, named for Constantine's daughter, but actually believed to be for his other daughter, Helena, Rome, Italy, 337 to 351. A mausoleum is a building, especially a large and stately one, housing a tomb or tombs. The mausoleum is named for Constantine the Great's daughter, Constantina, or Constanza. But the latest scholarship suggests it was actually built for her sister, Helena, who died in 360. In the plan on the left, we can see 12 columns that are placed in the center. Those represent the 12 apostles of Christ, or the 12 tribes of Israel. The shape represents the idea of ascension, and the dome represents heaven as we learned with the pantheon. The other popular type of church plan is a central plan that you see here that is usually based either on the shape of a circle or on a Greek cross, a cross with equal arms. These are called central plans because the measurements are all equidistant from a center. Besides the influence of ancient Roman architecture, the circle had spiritual associations. The circle, which has no beginning and no end, was symbolic for the perfection and eternal nature of God. Here's our final image. Thanks for watching, everyone. Turn your words into wisdom. Oprah Winfrey.